Hi YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark again, and I'm going to read from the book. Again, this is a Population Control Through Nuclear Pollution by Tamplin and Goffman, 1970. This We're still on Chapter 2, and the subtitle, I'm going to put my reading glasses on, is The Genetic Consequences of Radiation. Dun, 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 dun. That's what we've all been waiting for. <clears throat> it is important to point out at the onset of any discussion of genetic effects of radiation that we know the effects are harmful, but we do not know precisely how harmful. This is emphasized by the United Nations Scientific Committee on the Effects of Atomic Radiation. Since neither a comprehensive estimate of the genetic risk nor an upper limit to that estimate is available. The assessment of genetic damage from main sources of radiation must still be made by means of comprehensive risks. Oh, great. That's just great. In other words, like maybe 10 million people could die and they could make a shitload of money. In other words, we know that 10 rads of radiation are worse than 1 rad but we don't know how harmful one rad is. At the same time, in the United States and elsewhere, we have a so-called permissible level of exposure, which was recently increased thanks to President Obama. This level corresponds to that recommended by the International Commission on Radiological Protection. The public is often told that this level is safe or negligible. But consider the highly qualified aspects of this recommendation. And here it is. Because of the need for guidance in this regard, the Commission in its 1958 recommendations suggested a provisional limit of five rims. One rad is equal to one rim for most of the radiation encountered. Okay. Suggested the provisional limit of five rims per generation for the genetic dose of the whole population from all sources additional to natural background radiation and to medical exposures. The Commission believes that this level provides reasonable latitude for the expansion of atomic energy programs in the foreseeable future. It should be emphasized that the limit may not in fact represent a proper balance between har possible harm and poss probable benefit. What? Say what? <laughs> it should be emphasized that the limit may not in fact represent a proper balance between possible harm and probable benefit because of the uncertainty in assessing the risks and the benefits that would justify the exposure. That's what they said. Oh my God. I'm sorry, I had to get a drink of water. That stunned me. Notice that they, now, this is Goffman speaking, or Tamplin and Goffman speaking. Notice that they indicate that a major consideration was allowing a reasonable latitude for the expansion of atomic energy programs. One wonders whether the recommendation of this small group of experts should be accepted without question. Is, is the reasonable latitude really reasonable? Should not a much broader segment of society than this small group make this decision? A decision for all men and all time where man's heredity itself is at stake? Amen, Brother Goffman. Amen, Brother Samplin. <laughs> I swear, really. There are two components to the genetic effects of radiation. One, lethal effects that lead to the death before maturity or that, leads to, or that lead to sterility. Uh -huh. Lethal effects... Number one, lethal effects that lead to death before maturity, 
dying when you're young, or lead to sterility. And two, effects that contribute to the general pattern of illness and mortality in adult life. Meaning your life sucks. You have all kinds of like rashes and illnesses and you die young. In the population, the present pattern of illness and mortality results from a complicated and essentially totally unknown interplay between heredity factors and the environment. The mechanism by which radiation would be expected to influence these patterns is by altering the genes and chromosomes that determine their heredity factors transferred to the child. The United Nations Scientific Committee on the Effects of Atomic Radiation states, It is generally accepted that there is a genetic component in much, if not all, illness. This component is frequently too small to be detected. In other instances, the evidence for its presence is unequivocal. Nevertheless, the role of genetic factors in the health of human populations has not in the past been considered seriously in vital or health, vital in health statistics. As a consequence, data on the prevalence of hereditary diseases and defects are now largely restricted to that collected by geneticists for special purposes in limited populations from a small number of countries. An assessment of the hereditary defects and diseases with which a population is affect, afflicted does not necessarily provide a measure of the Im, imposed burden of suffering and hardship on the individual, family, or society. Wow. So they're saying because no one ever kept track, too fucking bad, we're not claiming it. This can be fair, paraphrased as, most of our information concerning genetic disorders in man relates to simple gene mutations in such rare diseases as hemophilia. This is only the top of the iceberg because all human disease has a genetic component. The United Nations Committee goes on to state that most human disease has a genetic component, but it is not related in a simple way to a simple dominant recessive gene system. The major human disease, excuse me, the major human diseases are determined by the interplay of a large number of genes and the environment in an unknown fashion. Just recently, Dr. C. O. Carter published conclusive evidence demonstrating a multi-gene basis for such major diseases as diabetes, ischemic heart disease, schizophrenia, rheumatoid arthritis, ischemic, oh, excuse me, rheumatoid arthritis, ischemic heart disease, coronary heart attacks, kills two or more times as many Americans annually as all forms of cancer combined. Really? Coronary heart attacks kill two or more as many Americans annually as all forms of cancer combined? The toll of schizophrenia socially is best stated as massive. No shit, Sherlock. In estimating the genetic effects of radiation, the above considerations indicate that it is, it is essential to assume that all of man's illness and mortality are a consequence of mutations in the population. By this assumption, if the mutation frequency were doubled, these deaths and disease rates would be doubled. This is the only reasonable assumption. The United Nations Scientific Committee on the Effects of Atomic Radiation estimates that one rad would increase the natural mutation frequency by a factor between one-tenth and one-one-hundredth. The existing radiation protection guidelines would allow a genetically significant dose of five rads to be accumulated by 30 years of age. This could increase the mutation frequency and hence increase death and disease rates by 5 to 50 percent. Wow, we're actually seeing that. As an upper limit then, the radiation protection guideline dosage could increase the death and disease rates by 50 percent.
It is difficult to understand how the present allowable exposure of five rads in 30 years is justified, even if the true effect were the smaller value, i.e. 5%. Hmm. Well, I'll end there, you guys. If you want me to do it longer, put that in the comments and I'll keep reading. But I think short ones are better. It's pretty interesting information. So, ciao, you guys.